Hello and welcome to Tony Broom Ministries, presenting the old time preaching from God's Holy Word. This time we start our session by talking about having fellowship with God, and then the message entitled, Allow or Believe. We will come and live with you. We'll have fellowship together, right with you wherever you are. Thank God for the church, the building, but you don't have to be in the building. Some people in Africa are on dirt floors, pup tents. Doesn't matter where it is, it just matters what it is. You can be together with Him and He can be together with you wherever you are. Who would ever have thought that someone would be talking on the phone at 9.30 at night, playing with the grandchild in the floor, go to bed, and medical people can say heart attack, they can see brain inactivity, they can say sugar elevation. You can say all these things medically, but you and I know that a person can just go to bed and go to be with Jesus. That's what happened last week. Do we just allow or do we believe? Allow or believe? This man had an appointment with the preacher. And he came in and he said, Mr. Johnson, what can I do for you? He said, well, I want to affiliate myself with your church. He said, that's a good thing to do and we'd love to have you. And Mr. Johnson said, well, there's a couple things you might need to know. He said, first of all, I do have a problem with taking a little drink. And the preacher said, don't worry about that. We allow for a little bit of that. And he said, well, I have a problem sometimes with gambling. I just like to play poker. I don't know what it is. The Saturday night comes, I just got to play a little poker. He said, well, really, we allow for a little bit of that too. And he said, I got this problem sometimes with doing things with money that I shouldn't. Sometimes I've been known to swindle people out of their money and I have to admit that I've stolen. Preacher said, well, all have sinned, so we allow for a little bit of that too. Mr. Johnson said, preacher, I think what I'm hearing is you just gonna allow me to go to hell. (laughs) People allow for some things and other things they actually believe in. Allowance is acknowledgement. I acknowledge something to be. But belief is commitment. Like the chicken and the pig. Chicken told the pig, we need to give a preacher a good breakfast. And the pig said, well, that's all right for you. For you, it's just a little sacrifice. But to me, it's total commitment. (laughs) I don't think I'm in for it. So if you allow for something, you acknowledge it. But if you believe in it, it's total commitment. Those in Jesus' day tried to justify themselves or at least make themselves appear not to be as bad off as they actually were. In Matthew chapter 23, verse 30, they said, If we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. In other words, if I lived back then, I wouldn't have done what they did. Made myself look better because if I'd been back there I wouldn't have done all that they did and Jesus told them in Luke chapter 11 verse 47 and 48 woe unto you exclamation point for you build the sepulchres of the prophets and your fathers killed them truly you bear witness that you allow the deeds of your fathers for they indeed killed them and you build their sepulchres in this case the Jews allowed the evil deeds of their fathers by not only going along with them and approving them, but they topped it all off by actually doing worse things than their forefathers had done. The fathers were guilty of killing the prophets. The children are guilty of crucifying the Messiah. Talking about the pot calling the kettle black. That's it. The fathers killed the prophets and the children crucified the Messiah. It's all the same mold. It's all in the same batch. We have all been hatched from Adam's sinful nature, if you will. We are created in the image of God and after His likeness. But there's something else that happened. 
There's sin that came into the picture. There are things which most people who claim to acknowledge God allow. Paul testifies before the council in Acts chapter 34. Picking up in verse 12, he says, They neither found me in the temple disputing with any man, neither raising up the people, neither in the synagogues nor in the city. Neither can they prove the things whereof they now accuse me. They are accusing me of all these things and they don't have any proof. In verse 14, but he said, but this I will confess unto you. I admit this. I confess unto thee that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers, believing all things that are written in the law and in the prophets. Now, to this point, you just allow, but now he says, I actually believe in the things that the Bible says. I believe in what the Torah said. I believe in what the prophet said. I believe these things and have hope toward God, which they themselves also allow, that there shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. And herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense toward God and toward men. I'm just worshiping God. I'm doing my best to worship God. You even yourselves allow hope toward God. You allow for the fact that there will be a resurrection, but not only do I allow it, I believe in it. Amen. Chapter 26, verse 8. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? Why should it be such an unbelievable thing that God should raise the dead? If God can create you in to start with, He can certainly raise the dead. Does the resurrection have a place in our life for just being an allowance? Do we allow for it or do we actually believe in it? There's a difference, allow or believe. Paul describes the struggle with sin which results from the nature of the old man in the life of the unsanctified believer in Romans chapter 7, verses 14 and 15. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Now, while the law couldn't save you, it was spiritual in that it pointed people to God. That's what the law was supposed to have done. It could not justify anybody, according to Galatians chapter 3, but the law was supposed to have pointed you to the one who could justify you. And if you did what the law said, as long as you were doing, you were living. Blessed is the man who continues all things that are written in the book of the law to do them. As long as you were doing, you were living, but the moment you quit doing, you quit living as far as the law is concerned. Paul said, I tried all that. I tried all that Judaism. I tried all that religion. I tried all that pharisaical law. I tried all that. I was allowing. But now I'm doing more than allowing. I'm believing. I went through that struggle. For that which I do, I allow not. I'm even doing things that I don't even want to do. For what I would, that do I not. That which I really want to do, I end up not doing. But what I hate, I hate it. I don't want to do it. But that I do. I end up doing it. Verse 17, Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. That struggle that happens. You're born again. You love God. You've been to Calvary. You've been to the cross. But there's a struggle in your life. It's that old man who still has to be put to death. All things are new. If any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are new. Old things pass away. Behold, all things are new. But there's still a problem. There's something that has to be dealt with. That old nature. What in the world will we do? Paul describes it. He was not talking about his life then in his fulfillment of ministry and the power of God. He said, I speak with tongues more than you all in baptism in the Holy Spirit, getting ready to go to heaven, caught up to the third heaven. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about that struggle that all of us have gone through. In verse 24, first part of verse 25, Oh, wretched man that I am! Exclamation point. He cries out, Oh, wretched man that I am! Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Then he said, I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. That's the one who will deliver you. That's the one who will sanctify you. 
That's the one who will break the power of sin over your life. At this point, we might as well uncover and reveal the now already familiar, what some might call the Pentecostal list. Salvation, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost, divine healing, the second coming of Christ. I mean, after all, I've included everything that Sister Amy McPherson included, except she didn't focus in on sanctification, but it's in there anyway. The Bible teaches it. Allow or believe. Do we simply allow for them or do we really believe in them? Salvation. Think about salvation. Oh yeah, I allow for salvation. I'm glad that you're saved. I'm glad the preacher saved. I'm glad the bishop saved. I'm glad my sister saved. I'm glad the brother saved. It don't bother me. You allow for it, but you don't really believe in it. Sanctification. Oh yeah, I accept the fact that we need to do better, that we need to have things better in our life and power of sin broken. I allow for it, but I don't really believe in it. Baptism of the Holy Ghost. It's all right for you to talk in tongues. It's all right for you to prophesy. It's all right for you to jump up and down that crazy. Just don't look for me to do it. We allow for it, but we don't believe in it. Divine healing. Everybody, even unbelievers, we would call them unbelievers. Perhaps they call themselves unbelievers. I'm not judging them as such. I'm just saying that's what they are classified. That's what they call themselves, unbelievers. An unbeliever would say that, yes, I believe that God can heal. I allow for healing, but I don't really believe in it. There are Christians who allow for healing. They admit that God can heal, but they don't believe that He will heal. We know that God does heal. So we allow for it, and we also believe in it. The second coming of Christ. Yes, Jesus could come, but we act like He won't. So we allow for it, but we don't really believe in it. If we really believed in salvation like we say we do, we would be more busy telling people about Christ. If we believed in sanctification, there would be more sanctified believers in our churches that are filled with saved yet carnal Christians that have never had the power of sin broken and killed in their life. I'm talking about this morning. If we really believed it, just allowing for it, but if we really believed it, there would be more of it happening. Amen. Baptism in the Holy Ghost? You wouldn't have to run a campaign. You wouldn't have to have a teaching class for six months. If you did more than allow it and believe it, it would be happening. Divine healing. There were times when healing took place normally, just all the time. It's because people did more than allow for it. They believed in it. The second coming of Christ, if we really believed that He's coming, not just allowing for it, but if we really believed it, we would live like He's coming right now. Amen. Allow or believe. Do we just allow... Or do we believe in them? The question is, how do you know? The answer is, here is a sure enough proof. What you allow happens to somebody else. But what you believe happens to you. What you allow, when you allow something, you watch someone else do it. Yeah, I'll allow you to work for the church as long as I don't have to. I'll allow you to do ministry as long as I don't have to. What you allow, you let somebody else do but when you believe something, you do it. Jesus said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom, but they who do the will of my Father who is in heaven. Everybody talking about heaven ain't going there. We've got to do. We're not saved by what we do, but when you're saved, you will do. Doing does not produce faith. But faith produces works. Faith without works is dead. That means dead. Do we only allow for Christ or do we really believe in Him? 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 4. To whom coming as unto a living stone. You're not coming to a dead rock. You're coming to a living stone. Disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. He is a precious cornerstone. He is a rock of ages cleft for me. He is a rock in a weary land. You're coming to Him as this 
precious cornerstone, the living stone, verses 6 and 7. Wherefore also it is contained in the Scripture. That means that he's quoting from the Old Testament. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, means chosen and precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. He who believes on him will not make haste. He who believes on him will not be ashamed. He who believes in him will not be confounded. If you're just allowing, you're confounded. But if you believe, you're not confounded. You're not confused anymore. Unto you therefore which believe, he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient. The stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. The builders, the elders, the priests, the people of Israel in general, the nation, they disallowed him. They rejected him. The chief cornerstone, he was disallowed of the builders, but he is the chief God's precious cornerstone. To us who believe in him, he is precious. The same cornerstone is a rock of a foundation, a sure foundation to those who believe. But to those who do not believe, the same rock is made a rock of stumbling and a stone of offense. It's the same rock. The rock hadn't changed. I told you about, they asked the preacher, do you believe in rock and roll? He said, yeah, I've got my feet on the rock and my name's on the roll. No, no, come on, preacher. Now, you don't believe in rock and roll, really, do you? He said, no, I'm on the rock that won't roll. He's the rock. He's a stable rock. If you fall on that rock, you may be broken. But if that rock has to fall on you, it will grind you to powder. We need to let our response to Christ be the same as that of the ex-blind man, John chapter 9, verse 38. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Not just allowed, but I believe. When you believe, something's going to happen in your life. You'll never be the same. When you believe what he said, that's what the song said. Little bitty Ebby Turnquist. Jesus, I believe what you said. Jesus, I believe what you said. And it doesn't matter whether old Doug Hogan comes along and he sings the same song and Bill Gator Trail backs him up. It's the same thing. Jesus, I believe what you said. I believe you really love me. I believe you really care. I believe you gave yourself for me. Jesus, I believe what you said. Amen. That's what it is. Faith is not complicated. Thank God for a simple gospel that works. All you're doing is taking God at His word. I believe what your word says. I don't have to go into the Greek. I don't have to go into the Hebrew. I don't have to search it out on Google. I don't have to get another search engine. I don't have to do all this. All I have to do is take God at His word and believe what He says. If you can't believe it in Hebrew, you can't believe it in Greek, you're not going to believe it in English. All you got to do is just read it in the language that you know best and when God says something in His Word, just take it just like it are and believe it like what God says. Yes, yes. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son does not have life. It's not just saying I'm Abraham's seed. God is our Father. Jesus said, no way, Jose. Because if God were really your father, you would love him whom God has sent. You would love Messiah. If God was your father, you would love me. They said, no, I don't love you. I hate you. And they, Jesus, in essence, is saying, that's why you're really saying you hate God. You say with your lips that you love God, but you hate me, and I came forth from God. There's no way that we can hate Jesus and love God at the same time. You can't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. You've got to have one, you've got to have all, or you don't have any. He who has a father has a son. He who honors the son honors the father who sent the son. He who has the Holy Ghost, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. The three of the bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost. These three are one. You can't reject one without rejecting them all. But when you get one, you get them all. You might get them all, but you're not filled with all. You get him all, 
you get all, but then He needs to have all of you. Amen. When you get the Holy Ghost, when you get saved, and we talk about getting the Holy Ghost as Pentecostal, we know what we mean, but when you're filled with the Holy Ghost later, not only do you have the Holy Ghost, but now He's got you. Amen. More of you. We've got Him. How can we have more of God? You can't have more of God. God fills up the heaven. He has to bow down on His knees to even behold the things that are going on in heaven. You're talking about having more of God. You can't have more of God. You've got God. God's got to have more of us. We've got to die to ourselves. The church is teaching people how to live. And that's good. We need to teach people how to live, but you've got to die first. Because that old man is still kicking around. Ishmael's got to be thrown out of the house. Ishmael and Isaac can't survive in the same house together. One of them's got to go. And I'm afraid sometimes we're throwing the wrong one out. We're throwing Isaac out and keeping Ishmael. And then we're wondering why all hell's breaking loose in our life. That's the reason. Father in heaven, thank you for this word. Thank you, Lord, that we can do more than allow. We can believe what your word says. We can believe what the prophets have said. We can believe what the apostles have said. We can believe what the Bible has said. We can believe what the epistles have said. We can believe what the book of the Revelation says. We don't have to believe what the beast says. We can believe what the Lamb says. We thank you, Lord, for the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Praise God in Jesus' name. Let's give him some praise this morning. Hallelujah. Being a real believer involves more than just allowing. We have to believe. Make sure that Jesus Christ is your Savior, Lord, and you are committed to Him. Allow or Believe has been a production of Tony Broom Ministries.